In this video, I wanna share with you the six biggest money traps that I've identified where some of my friends, my colleagues, my fellow millennials and middle-class Americans fall into that it's keeping them poor. And you should especially avoid these six money traps if you don't have a good financial foundation already built for you at the moment. What do I mean by a good financial foundation? This is at least having three month emergency fund to where if during a rainy day, if you lose your job, you still have enough money to pay your bills and give you some time to find your next job. This is also have a budget that you set every single month and have a little bit of money left over to put towards an investment plan, securing your financial future. Also at the same time, don't be drowning in a bunch of debt, especially some high interest rate debt that you can barely keep up with. So if you don't have this good financial foundation, set for you at the moment, you should definitely 100% avoid these six money traps. Starting off with money trap number one is what I call living the modern day millennial lifestyle. What is this lifestyle? I see it quite a bit on social media, my friends live it, and honestly, sometimes I feel like I also deserve this lifestyle as well. So this lifestyle can be characterized by the trips. Those little trips that you take every single weekend. This can be that kind of bigger trip that you take every couple months. It could be that grand international trip that you do once or twice a year. Having food made for you for breakfast, lunch, brunch, dinner. This is getting coffee and boba and also paying a little bit extra to have the food shipped directly to your house with you know, Uber Eats and Grubhub or whatever service. Another characteristic is having all this memberships, you know, your Amazon Prime, your Netflix, your HBO Max, your yoga class, your gym memberships, your pottery class, your Disney annual passes. You know, another characteristic, if I can name off a couple more, is having that apartment that you can barely afford or going out to that fancy salon getting a haircut and, and your hair dyed and your nails done they have that salary job and they have that job that they're bringing in some money and so they feel like they deserve this kind of lifestyle but if you don't have that financial foundation that I talked about early in the video already built out and set for you then honestly you should truly avoid living this type of a lifestyle moving on to money trap number two is having this mindset of buying things that you don't don't need. If you have this habit of just buying things that you think are cute or that are cool, that you think can kind of marginally improve your life, then expect to have money fly out the window. Nowadays, you can just go out to you know that mall that seems to always pop up, go out to Target and just continue to accumulate all of these things for around the house, for that little hobby that you have, for that little collection that you have, buying that shot glass or that magnet when you're out on vacation vacation. Another example is also buying brand name items or luxury items. I remember I always kind of like had that jacket that I was so into that I just feel like if I bought it, I would be the coolest kid ever or buying that couple hundred dollar pair of shoes. I bought it and I liked it for maybe a couple months and now I truly don't care about it and I moved on to the next thing. And so now after going through that process so many times, I've kind of just discovered that those things truly really don't matter anymore and it's really just all this marketing to get you to spend more money. So if you can just stick with this idea of buy things that you need, you'll end up saving so much money over time to put it towards something that you truly care about. Moving on to money trap number three are credit cards. Now, before I actually talk bad about credit cards, which I'm sure many of you guys already know by now, I think that credit cards are awesome. I use a credit card. I get cash back from credit cards buying things that I would have already bought myself anyways. And especially if I stuck with rule number two, which is only buying things that I need, credit cards are great. I also use credit cards to help me budget every single month. So what I do is I put all my expenses that I need to pay for that month on my one credit card. And by the end of the month, I can see how much much money I spent cumulatively all in one place. And so that helps me keep track of my expenses on a month to month basis. And of course I pay off my credit card for that month. And so that's the key is to pay it off every single time and don't keep a rolling balance. Credit card interest rates can be super freaking high, like 20% or more depending on your credit score. So if you buy depreciating assets, you buy food, you buy lunch and you put it all on a credit card and then 
and you have a rolling balance and, are, and debt, then that means that you're paying so much money for the things that you bought because you keep having to pay more on that interest. So certainly don't keep a balance. And if you are just really bad about paying your credit cards off, just honestly don't even have them. Money trap number four is being dependent on drugs and alcohol or anything of this nature. Because if we really think about it, you spent some good money buying it, right? Because uh, the good stuff isn't cheap. And then you do the thing and then you feel good for that time being and then it goes away. And then once it goes away, you need to do it again. So then the cycle rinses and repeats. This is an ongoing expense that will always be there unless one day you decide, I don't need it anymore. If you want to save money to put it towards something that you truly care about that will bring you happiness for a lot longer than a couple of hours, then definitely avoid spending all your money on drugs and alcohol or anything of that nature. Moving on to money trap number five is attending a college that you know you truly can't afford and it won't bring you back enough money to pay off how much you actually spent on that degree. So I know that this is a bit controversial because a lot of people think college is an investment into your future and that you should go to the best schools to get the best education so that you can get a high paying job. Although I do agree with this, the right way to think about it is the degree that you get should be able to land you a job to be able to make you enough to pay back how much you actually spent on it. So if you did spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on your degree, then once you graduate, you should make enough money to be able to pay that back within a reasonable amount of time. I would say maybe five years or less. If it really is going to take you decades to pay off how much you actually spent because you don't really make as much money as you thought you would, that is a major mistake. And and the more student loans and the bigger loans and the deeper in debt you get, that's the higher of a risk that you're taking. And something that I notice when students end up borrowing all of this money is that they truly don't know what they're getting into. For example, say they borrow thirty to fifty thousand dollars for their student loans, and then the question is, have they ever made twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars? let alone save 20, 40, $50,000? If the answer is no, when they borrow that much money, they don't have an understanding of truly how long it's gonna take to actually pay that back. If you do go to college, consider how much money is it gonna cost you? What degree are you gonna get? Have a projection on how much money you're gonna make so that your return on investment makes sense. If you guys are still here, you are freaking awesome. Thank you so much for hitting that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. Number six. Six money trap is buying that brand new expensive luxury car. I'm a huge car guy, I love cars, I go to car shows, but at the same time, I think that's one of the biggest wastes of your money to buy a expensive luxury car. And the reason why I say that is because if you already have a reliable used car that gets you to point A to point B, you know, a car like that usually costs anywhere from 15 up to $25,000. Whereas if you bought a luxury car, that can cost anywhere from 50 to 80 or even more. And so you're essentially paying double to even triple the amount of money. And you gotta ask yourself, for what? It might look a little bit nicer, be a little bit shinier, go a little bit faster, have a little bit of a dr better driving experience, and you might, you know, look a little bit cooler as you drive down the road, but at the same time, that's a lot of money just to do all of that lifestyle creep. I'd rather spend all that extra money, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars that I saved buying a used car, putting that towards an investment, or even just putting it towards a business that I want to work on. It, that will bring me a lot more happiness than say, just that luxury car. I know everybody is different, but at the same time, I feel like nowadays we're all marketed to, you gotta buy that nicer car to be cooler, you know, to keep up with the Joneses. And so that's why I really think that that is one of the biggest money traps that you should really avoid. It's okay to buy that luxury car or go out to vacations, live that millennial lifestyle, go out to eat, buy things that you want from time to time if and only if you have your financial foundation already locked down in place and set for you. I did mention three months worth of emergency fund, but that's really just a minimum. I'd prefer it to be six months or even one year's worth of emergency fund. So it's okay to buy all these nice things if you can afford it. And in which case, have that 
financial foundation in place. All right, that's about it for the video. If you guys have any other money traps, let me know down in the comments and also consider hitting that thumbs up button if you've enjoyed this video. And please consider also subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to get it to a thousand subscribers so I could get this channel monetized. So thank you so much. All right, guys, my name is Jimmy Invest and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.